especially upon that for a life of love. Amen. Let us pray. Father, hear our prayers for James and Sarah, who today are united in the sacrament of marriage. Give them your blessing and strengthen their love for each other. We ask for this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Let us now listen attentively to the first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals, and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals. But none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up his place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife. And the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now were there six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding twenty to thirty gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then, when people have drunk freely, an inferior wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory. And his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I have to give you a little background of this day. Sarah called me a little while ago, I won't say how long, but it wasn't recently, and she asked me the question. She said, Brother Bill, I want you to do something for me, something very, very important. And I kind of guessed what it was, but I thought, well, what could she want? Hmm. So I let her go on. I didn't even ask the question. She said, Father Bill, I'm going to get married. And I said, congratulations. Well, Father Bill, I want you to be there for that day. And I hesitated for a second because I knew she wouldn't like the response. And I said, well, Sarah, I'm sorry. No, I can't. You see, I have two parishes, and there's no way I can do this. And she said, well, if there's any way for you to consider, it's like, Sarah, I can't. So she called a little bit later. A similar conversation. Sarah, I'd love to do it, really would, but I have two parishes, I can't do it. And she said, well, if you'll consider, just think about it, just, just give yourself time, it's like, I will. And, and a conversation. Another conversation happened. Father Bill, it's like, Sarah, I know what you're going to say. You heard the news, didn't you? It's like, news? What news? I don't know if she played dumb or not, but she said, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, this is the news. I don't have two parishes anymore. I'm not as busy as I was. So the answer is yes. And so I am here. I share that story because James knows this, and I'm sure the three girls know this well. But some of you might not know this about Sarah, is that she is persistent. <laughs> now, that might be a little understatement, but I couldn't help but choose this gospel because isn't it a similar thing that happens? Mary asked a very simple request of Jesus. Well, it wouldn't be simple for anyone else, but he is the Son of God and he can work miracles. They're out of line. Big problem. Tonight, or any night when there's a reception, when you close the bar, people start to go. And you see close it for the last time. So you want the celebration to continue. And in those days, marriage celebration has continued for days, sometimes weeks. Aren't you glad you're living today? Can you imagine? More than one day? So that was a major catastrophe, a terrible tragedy to have that happen. So Mary chooses to get involved and asks Jesus the question, and he says, no. So does Mary accept it? 
obediently, submissively? No. She immediately, without asking another question, goes to the servant and say, do whatever he tells you. She knows her son. Somehow, Sarah knew that if she would ask not once, but twice, but how many times, I kind of lost track, if I would do it, that she would get her way. Well, that was really a small question, because a bigger question, of course, was asked by James. And there was a little fear and trepidation, wasn't there, as there always is on the part of every man when you ask the question, will you? And certainly, she said, without hesitation, I know, it did not take many conversations, it only took one simple question, and she said, I do. And so, that is the background of why we are here today. Because of questions that were asked, not only asked, but more importantly, questions that were answered. Sometimes we answer questions with words, as I did in my conversation with Sarah, but more often, and more importantly, we answer questions with deeds, by doing things. Because today, as you get married, as all couples do, you're going to promise some things. You're going to promise faithfulness, fidelity, to be true to one another. When? All the time. In bad times, not just good. When you're not well, not just when you're healthy. When you can't make the payments, when you can't pay the bills, as well as when you have more than enough money for everything. That is the test. Because it's one thing, a small thing in a sense, for you today to say, I do. But it's a huge thing. It's everything for you to say, not just today, but throughout your married life, that I love you. And of course, Jesus works the miracle, he changes the water into wine, but what's the real gift that he gives? The wine, of course, is a symbol, simply, of a greater gift that he will give us, and that is the gift of his blood. Jesus gives us his very life, and the life of James, the life of Sarah, ends right here, ends right now. I don't know if you think about this, but it's a little bit like a funeral, what we do in a wedding. Why? Because, in a real sense, there's no more James, there's no more Sarah after today, because they really become one. Like Genesis says, you cling to one another, as if your life depends on them. Because, you know what? It does. And St. Paul says, when you do that, what you've got to do is, you have to rejoice. But he says, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Always and all ways. This is what these promises, these vows, that you're going to say to each other today mean. Not just now, not just today, but every day, until that do you part. That is quite a commitment. But I'm certain that Sarah is up to it. Well, what about James? She's Miss Persistence. However, she is marrying someone who understands what it is to love. Who understands what it is to love only as a father can. Sometimes, as in his life, fathers really have to fight hard for their children. Now, many just give up. They surrender their rights, and they just say, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to get involved. Mary gets involved. And not only Mary, but Jesus as well. How does your concern affect me? It seems that Mary's not minding her own business, but really what she's doing is she's doing something out of love. You have done what you've done, James, out of love. You have become, at least as I have heard about it, I have seen you in action. But from hearing not only from you, but also Sarah, you become a wonderful father. And Sarah, you didn't say this, but many women have said this to me, that the mark of a good man, one that you should think about spending your life with, is one who knows how to take care of children. That's not a question for you. You know exactly, you see him. And you know how he's had to fight to be a father, but you fought for them. So whether it's that persistence or that fighting spirit, these are different ways, different expressions of what we're here to celebrate. And of course, what it is, is the greatest gift of all, and that is love. You also have a special gift today, and that is we're here not just on any day, but we're here during the Easter season. Look at that Easter candle for a second. You can't see it lit. You can't see the flame. Well, this candle has been burning, maybe not continuously, but for almost 50 days. So when candles burn, they get the flame.
flame that is gets buried deep within that candle so you can't see it anymore, even though you can't see that flame, it still burns brightly. And that is the challenge with love. Even though you can't see it, even sometimes it seems you can't feel it anymore, that it continues, that it's always there. This candle is lit. Not only during the Easter season, but when it all begins at baptism, and when it all ends at our funeral. It is a symbol of that light of God. The light that we've celebrated for almost 50 days, and tomorrow, of course, this is the great vigil of the Feast of Pentecost. But even though Jesus died out of love for us, that love didn't die. That love continued. Jesus rose from the dead. But then Jesus gave us a great gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, James and Sarah, I'm here to tell you, not just me, but on God's behalf, that all you have to do in those bad times, in those sad times, in those poor times, in those sick times, all you have to do is doing what you're doing right now. Come together to the Lord and ask Him the question. Just as Sarah asked me those questions many, many times, ask the question. What does the question need to ask? Well, we all have our doubts. We struggle. We go through hard times. Do you love me? You're going to ask that of each other. No doubt. You already have. You're going to ask that again. But what you need to do is come together as you are right now and ask that question of Jesus. Jesus, do you love me? And just take a moment and look at how much he loves you. His answer is always the same. I have loved you this much. May that be your answer today and every day of the long, very heart of happiness. My dear friends, you have come here together in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and this community of your family and friends gathered today. Christ abundantly blesses your love. He already consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you assume the duties of marriage and mutual and lasting fidelity. And so, in the presence of the church, I now ask you to state your intentions. James and Sarah, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? Will you continue to accept children lovingly from God, bringing them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your hands and declare now your consent before God and His Church. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent, filling you both with his blessings. What God has drawn, men must not divide. As we have experienced God's Word in the Bible and felt His loving presence in these exchange of vows, we present to God, our Father, these petitions for people in our world today. 
The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father on earth, the Pope, all the bishops, and the clergy everywhere, that they may lead us to deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our President and all leaders of government, that they may be effective in achieving peace and eliminating poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married persons, that they may continue to give, be able to forgive, and find happiness deepen with the passing of each day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James and Sarah, now beginning their life together, that they may have divine assistance at every moment, the constant support of friends, the rich blessing of children, a warm love reaching out to others, and good health until a ripe old age, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, lonely, discouraged, or oppressed, that they may be strengthened by God's help and aided by their friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the relatives and friends of James and Sarah, and of all present for this wedding, that they may enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those personal needs, which we mention now in silence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, your Son taught us to ask, to seek, to knock. We have just done so confident that you look upon our many needs, consider our trusting faith, and in your great love, grant this request which we present to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in. So that together they rejoice in your gift of married love and continue to enrich your church with children. Lord, may they praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you help them in their work and know you are with them in their need. May they pray to you in the community of the church and be your witnesses in the world. May they reach old age in the company of their friends, coming at last to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Not in our sins, but in the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer one another a sign of Jesus
heart of that love, as you see, or I guess you see, no doubt too, in their lives is persistence. Whether it's teaching or being a father or all the different things that they're in, it doesn't happen overnight. And we have to do things again and again. We have to fight. So one thing that the Lord invites us, He asks us, He pleads with us to do it again and again, is to ask Him when we're in need. We can do that in many different ways. But the greatest and the first way He asks us to do that is by doing what we just did. By celebrating the Holy Eucharist, not just on special occasions like weddings, but each and every Sunday. I know that faith is part of their lives, and I believe that's why their love is so strong for one another. That faith and that love will be part of your life too. If when you're in need, you don't try to sort it all out yourself, but you go together with the Lord, and nothing will be impossible to figure out, and you will always know that you are loved. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. To each prayer, please respond, Amen. May the Lord Jesus was a guest at the wedding in Cana, bless you and your family and friends. May Jesus, who loved his church to the end, always fill your hearts with his love. May he grant that as you believe in his resurrection, so may you wait for him in joy and in hope. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now it's my great privilege, honor, and joy to announce for the very first time, husband and wife. Mm -hmm.